In this example, we'll use Softree's Rodent software to design a pit with bench cuts and a ramp to access the pit floor, similar to the uh, pit currently visible on my screen. There are many different workflows you can use to tackle uh, this or similar projects, but the workflow I will demonstrate today uses both the terrain and location modules. We'll start this project from scratch uh, using a couple of shape files and uh, DEM LiDAR data. Um, so with that being said, let's close out of terrain here. And let's open a new instance of terrain. So the first step uh, in terrain is all import uh, area of interest shapefile. Um, this is an optional step, uh, but it's uh, a, a useful uh, feature, especially if you have a large area with uh, LiDAR data that would uh, otherwise be really data heavy if you brought it all in. So we're going to use that feature to limit where we bring LiDAR data in for. So here I'm inserting the DEM data and we're presented with an import options dialog box and I'm going to use the selection tab to define where I bring uh, LiDAR data in for. So here I've added that area of interest polygon. I'm not skipping any of the points in it but in the default I'm skipping all the points. So we'll only bring in DEM points within our area of interest polygon. Next, I'm going to model our surface. So I'll create the tin, and while doing this, I'll also create the contours. Last step, another optional step, um, is I'm going to add a shape file uh, to delineate our pit floor. So in this case, we know where our pit floor uh, should be, and we have a, another feature to use for it. So I'm going to bring that in uh, just to simplify the process going forward. It's entirely optional. You can absolutely uh, delineate your own uh, pit extents uh, by hand without having a feature to reference. I'm just changing the uh, line type for this here now, so it's a little easier to see in the, the next phase. So for this uh, preliminary setup, so just building our tin and uh, uh, defining the uh, pit floor extents with a feature, uh, we're done and we're going to switch over into the location module. So we'll close out of terrain, open location, and the first thing in location we'll do is we'll create a new file referencing the topo surface that we've just created. There's our topo. Next, uh, since we have that uh, feature we'd like to reference for our pit floor, we're going to reference that. So here it, it's an optional step. Uh, we could have just gone with a single point and clicked in our own uh, pit floor extents. There we are. We're into the design. Um, we'll zoom in a bit here. We can see the uh, initial alignment follows that reference feature. The elevation is set because that reference feature had an elevation to it. And uh, the most peculiar thing is we've got a road alignment uh, when we wanted to create a pit. So we're going to change that road cross-section geometry uh, to be something more applicable to our project. Before we adjust the cross-section geometry though, I'm going to do one more uh, optional step. Um, and that is I want to soften the corners on my pit floor. So uh, to do that, I'm going to just add in horizontal curves. So um, we'll open up the curve panel and let's add in our default curve um, at all those turning points. So our default curve, I have it previously set to be 35 meter radius and there we go. So now back to the uh, cross-section geometry. So I've opened up the template editor. I'm going to create a new template. So uh, we'll call this one pit and what we'll do here is we'll just grab uh, two different components to, to give us the cross-section geometry we want. The first component will be the uh, uh, template component that automates the generation of our benches. And the second one will just be a, a, a temporary uh, component in there just to give us some geometry on the uh, right side of our alignment. So we've 
created our new template. Of course, the geometry doesn't change. Uh, in order to change what template supplied along the length of a road, we'll use the assigned by range. We'll select our, our pit template, and dot, 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 dot is the full extent of our alignment. So there we go. There, looking a bit more appropriate. Now, um, of course, we don't have the floor defined. Uh, we'll adjust what the floor looks like in uh, uh, terrain. So we're going to uh, take what we've done in location. We're going to save this location file as a terrain file. And uh, we'll model our pit, pit floor and merge that surface with our uh, surrounding topography. Now what I'm doing here, um, it just uh, controls how things look in uh, the train file. So I'm adding in uh, the, the linear features that represent my benches. And uh, I've also turned off uh, uh, connected cross sections. So this makes it a little less busy. So there, we can see that and Let's get rid of that uh, constant slope on the inside. So I've selected my center line, and I'm going to uh, break all the features on the inside of that center line. So break at current feature. When I do that, I'm lucky enough that the stuff on the right side is selected, uh, so I'll just hit delete. There, we've remodeled and things are looking pretty good. So now we've got our uh, pit walls and pit floor. Let's uh, save this and let's merge that with our, our topo surface. I didn't have to hit save as there, just to save. And now we'll go back to our topo surface. There we are. And I'm going to just get rid of that preliminary pit floor uh, feature. And I'm going to merge in the pit that we have modeled. So here when we do this, the surface uh, is out of date. We'll have to remodel our surface. It'll just take a second. And there we are. So we're going to save this as a new file, um, just so we can jump back and forth between the different surfaces. And uh, this next step, we have options for how we tackle it as well. So we could do uh, our ramp design in another instance of location, uh, referencing this new topo surface. Or we can do the ramp design in the same instance of location that we uh, designed our pit wall. Uh, we'll just change the reference topo surface and do the ramp with a, a separate alignment. So first we'll change the reference topo surface. So I've hit the setup tab, location setup, uh, alignment, and then reference terrains. And here I'll change our topo to topo with pit. We'll hit OK. Just doing recalculating. And I'll just hit control three on my keyboard to update the way things look in the 3D view, which now we can see the uh, benches and pit floor are in the surface. So now I've gone to the uh, Project Explorer panel. I'm just going to create a new alignment. And for this one where we don't have a reference feature, I'm just going to um, start with a single point and we'll click in our ramp alignment uh, by hand. So there, we've got our initial point. And just like last time, our default cross-section geometry uh, is applied to our cross-section. Um, so first step for me, in this case, I'll uh, change our template. So once again, I'll create a new template. And uh, we'll combine a, a series of components to get that cross-section geometry that we'd like. Uh, one th thing worth noting here as well is that uh, you don't have to remake your cross-section geometry for every project. Um, you can see in the top left there, we have a save table option. So you can save uh, your templates and uh, 
save them into your normal template folder if you want to see those every time you open up the software or you can uh, call them something else and uh, you can also share those with colleagues uh, as well so we've got our, our new template um, i'm just going to grab a, a mine hall road example so this mine hall road example we automatically get a, a safety berm generated if we have a drop off greater than whatever the parameters are uh, set in the uh, in the template component in this case, I believe that's a drop off of over uh, three meters. And of course, it's just basically a fillable form. Um, so yeah, three meters down at the bottom. And uh, it's really easy to update these to, to get the geometry that you'd like. So we've got our roadway component uh, that's in as a left component. I'm just going to paste it in as a right component. So we have sim a symmetrical uh, cross section. And I'm going to pull in the same uh, bench component that I, I used on that pit wall. So uh, we can pull that in from a separate template and paste it as a component in uh, our current. So, and we'll do that for both sides. And as we can see here too, I can uh, drag this around and uh, you can test how it behaves. So we've got our template configured. Once again, we're going to go to assign by range and assign that new template to the entire length of our alignment. And We'll start designing. So I've just cl right clicked added at IP and now I can move my uh, horizontal alignment around to, to give me the geometry that I'd like. Now this next little bit I've, I've sped up just to keep the uh, video concise, avoid repetition. Um, but uh, here I'm just clicking in our alignment uh, using the, the different views. Uh, so the big takeaways for this uh, portion of the video are just how interactive the software is. Uh, it's the basic functionality of adjusting my alignment and having everything update in real time. So I've got my profile being updated in real time, I've got my cross-section view updating in real time, I've got my slope stakes in the various views being updated as well. Uh, and one of the things that I'm trying to do here is avoid uh, filling uh, material onto the, the pit floor. Um, so yeah, really dynamic. As we get closer to uh, tying in our road um, with some existing infrastructure, I'm going to change uh, some settings in my 3D view. Uh, so here, I want to be able to see my, my topo surface. So one trick uh, with this is uh, to adjust the alpha channel. So I've 255 is fully opaque, um, 0 is fully transparent. Uh, I've set it at 120 so I can see where I'm in cut, where I'm in fill, and it also helps me see uh, little details such as the existing road uh, visible in that DTM. So really quickly we'll go back to the sped up um, uh, alignment adjustments. Uh, here, big thing, I'm just tying in with that existing road. Uh, so now that my uh, horizontal is largely figured out, I'm adjusting my vertical. Uh, there's going to be a little bit here that's uh, uh, somewhat iterative, so as we um, move things around, add curves. Uh, at the start of my road here, uh, I wanted to add a little bit more uh, length uh, to transition and add a nice uh, 30 kilometer an hour uh, vertical curve at the bottom of the pit floor. Um, yeah, so uh, we've got that assigned. I think uh, I'm pretty content with this geometry. Uh, last step for me in this one, I'm going to just add a few, uh, re well, a few. I'm going to add curves at all the uh, locations where I haven't had curves yet. I'll just go with our, our default curve uh, again for those. So we've got our uh, alignment figured out. Uh, just like we did when we uh, figured out the pit walls, uh, our next step here is to be, well, first we're going to save the location file, just if we need to go back and make edits in the future. Um, but once we're done that, I'm going to save it as a train file so we can merge that train with the uh, train and pit surface. So here, once again, I'm uh, going to make a few adjustments uh, this. Uh, so I changed, I just want to export the uh, line work for my current alignment, and I'm going to add in those uh, linear features uh, to show me where my uh, benches are being constructed. Now back in train. I made a little bit of a mistake this time. Um, I should have uh, 
turned off connected features just so I don't get those lines showing every cross section that's used to generate my uh, alignment. Um, so uh, instead of going back and re-exporting, I can just select those features. They're all start with STN. So I've right clicked select features by name and I'm going to make those cross sections uh, not displayed. And that's just, it uh, doesn't affect the geometry at all, it just makes the, the uh, views a little less busy. So we've got our ramp, I'm going to save that ramp, I'm going to go back to uh, the surface that we have the topo and the pit extents in, and I'm going to merge that ramp into the surface. Once again, the uh, surface is out of date, so we're going to remodel that surface and regenerate contours. And this calculation should only take uh, a few seconds. Um, oh, and there we go. Uh, so now we've got our surface. I'll click the 3D view. Uh, we can see what's going on. Um, and there we are. So we've got our ramp in there. Uh, we can click around. Uh, one nice thing about the software, it's very quick to, to render in the in the 3D. So looking at this 3D, uh, I'm content with uh, what we have designed here. Um, and I think we'll, we'll call that a, a wrap on our design. Uh, of course, if you wanted to create a, a formal output sheet, we can do that in our the multi-plot side of our software. Uh, we're out also uh, compatible with uh, uh, many different uh, output formats. Um, so if you're looking for uh, construction staking, uh, we can output different files for that, be it DXF, uh, text, or land XML. Um, we're also compatible uh, with other software. So if you have to share this uh, data with uh, other folks on your teams, if they're using another software, uh, compatibility shouldn't be an issue. All right, so again, Thank you for viewing the video and hope you found it useful.